it is fall 2024. It is almost open enrollment for 2025. Welcome to UC Retiree Medical Plans. My name is Garen Solbach. I'm the healthcare facilitator for UC Davis, which means that I'm one of a two-person program that specializes in health plans for UC employees and retirees. Nick Robledo and I are the two people at UC Davis who specialize in health insurance. We help troubleshoot the plans. We help you understand the plans. We help you enroll in and understand Medicare and how it interacts with the plans. And we help you coordinate Medicare with the plans. This is not the year to snooze through open enrollment. You really need to sit up and pay attention this year because it's a very mixed bag. Some people will have shocking premium increases. Others will see premium decreases. Many of us will see copayment increases to office visits and prescription drugs. So this could be a no big deal open enrollment for you, or it could be a very serious open enrollment for you. I hope that the following information helps prepare you for open enrollment for 2025. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about. First, we're going to talk about your options in general. Then we'll get into a little section about when and how to make changes to your plans. Obviously, open enrollment is your annual opportunity, but there are other options too. Then we'll get into a section about Medicare. You'll know I'm talking about Medicare when you see red font color in this presentation. We'll talk about UC's Medicare rules and how Medicare coordinates with our plans. Then we'll get into the individual plan overviews and compare and contrast more detail about the different medical plans. We'll get into the medical, the pharmacy, the behavioral health benefits, and anytime there's a change to any of those plans for next year, I'm going to point it out, and you're going to notice that I use a light blue font. So if you see red, that means Medicare. If you see light blue, that means a change for next year. And then we will conclude. That's the plan. As you see retirees, you have a menu of medical plans to choose from depending upon where you live. Let's talk about that. UC offers a couple of HMO plans and multiple PPO plans depending upon where you live. Geographic location is important because, for example, HMO plans are only available in urban California. HMOs may exist in other states, but UC doesn't contract with HMOs except in California. And HMOs are only available in about half of the counties in California the urban counties. They don't work well in rural areas. So in general, HMO plans are going to be in urban California. PPO plans might be statewide or national or international, depending on the plan. If you're trying to figure out what plans are available where, I would encourage you to use the UC Medical Plan Availability Tool. That's an Excel spreadsheet on the Healthcare Facilitator Program website. If you download that tool, and you have Microsoft Excel or you download an Excel viewer, you'll be able to enter a zip code in California and choose the overlapping county where that zip code overlaps. And the tool will tell you whether there are any HMOs available in that area. The tool will also tell you where PPOs work and whether you would be subject to VIA benefits coverage. So it's a way to know what plans you can choose depending upon where you live or plan to live. So use the tool to find out where exactly you could have an HMO. For example, you'll notice if you enter a zip code for Chico, California, you won't find any HMOs. You'll only find PPOs there because HMOs don't work in rural areas. Chico is too rural. If you go north of say Santa Rosa, Woodland, Roseville, you really won't find HMOs and you won't find them up on the high Sierra either. But that's just a rule of thumb. For details, use the medical plan availability tool. I want to point out that new for 2025, Kaiser, not Kaiser Senior Advantage, but regular Kaiser, the non-Medicare version, will be available for the first time in many zip codes in Monterey County. Kaiser is expanding to Monterey County in 2025. So here's the list of medical plans offered by UC to retirees. On your left, we have HMOs. On your right, we have PPO plans. Remember, as we look at this slide, red means Medicare. So if we look at the HMOs, Kaiser Permanente in blue means 
the regular Kaiser that is not for people with Medicare. But Kaiser Senior Advantage is the Medicare version of that plan uh, that is another HMO. And then, of course, we have the UC Blue and Gold HMO, which is HealthNet. That we'll, we'll talk about all these HMOs as we go along, and we'll also spell out what HMO and PPO mean, and we'll talk about the differences and the strengths and weaknesses of the different types of plans. On the right, we have the PPO plans. We have Core and UC Care. Those are non-Medicare PPOs. You'll notice that I did not list the UC Health Savings Plan. Some retirees may have retired with a third PPO that's not on this list called the UC Health Savings Plan. If you were an employee who retired with that plan, you can keep it until you or a covered family member becomes eligible for Medicare. Um, but that plan is not offered to retirees, so I'm not going to talk about that plan much in this presentation, and I have not listed it here. So it's not a mistake. I deliberately omitted that plan since it's not offered to UC retirees. In the red here, we have the Medicare medical plans that are all PPOs. We have the UC High Option Plan, the UC Medicare Choice Plan, UC Medicare PPO, and UC Medicare PPO without prescription drugs, which is a special plan for people who can be triple covered by UC, Medicare, and a third source like TRICARE for Life through the military or CalPERS benefits. Now, determining the medical plan premiums that you might pay for those different plans, it might be tricky. If you get 100% of the UC contribution towards retiree medical and dental coverage, then your premiums are in your open enrollment booklet that you'll get each fall at the end of October. And uh, those rates should apply to you. But many of us are not eligible for 100% of the UC contribution. If you're eligible for something less than 100%, then that means you're subject to what we call graduated eligibility. If you're subject to graduated eligibility, you're going to have to do some extra things to get your actual premiums. You could either sign into UC Rays to get your rates for next year, but that's only available during open enrollment. Or you could go to my website, the Healthcare Facilitator Program website, and download the UC Retiree Premium Estimator, which is an Excel spreadsheet, that will help you estimate exactly what you'll pay for the different medical plans, whether you have Medicare or not. That tool is available all year long. You can use it anytime and you don't have to sign in. You don't need a password, but you do need to have either Microsoft Excel or some kind of Microsoft Excel viewer to be able to use that tool. New for next year, they are going to attempt to roll out custom retiree premiums based upon our estimator tool on the Alex application that UCNet will link to. So if this works, and I'm not sure exactly when they're going to roll this out, but it should be in time for open enrollment, you should be able to estimate your premiums without Microsoft Excel by using the Alex tool. Stay tuned for more on that. Of course, you can always uh, call RASC customer service for assistance with premiums as well. Now, if you're wondering what percentage of the UC contribution do you get, if you don't remember, because it's been a while since you retired, remember that UC prints the percentage of the UC contribution above your address on your open enrollment booklet. So the envelope that your open enrollment booklet comes in has your address on it. Look right above your address for the percentage of the UC contribution that you get. So for example, this, this uh, example address for IMA, IMA gets 85% of the UC contribution toward medical and dental. She knows that because it says 85 above her name on the open enrollment envelope. So those are different ways to figure out what percentage you're eligible for and how to calculate premiums. But remember, if you have Medicare, don't forget to factor in the cost of Medicare which is, of course, totally separate. UC has no control over your Medicare premiums. So there are some things I want you to know about the medical plan premiums. Uh, first of all, whatever premium you pay for your UC medical plan, that's deducted from your UC pension. Okay. If you pay for Medicare, Medicare premiums are paid by you out of your Social Security income usually, or you may have to pay Medicare when you're billed. I always encourage retirees who have Medicare, 
If you're not getting Social Security income, please pay electronically using MyMedicare.gov if you can. You can also set up automated electronic payments through EasyPay. If you do a Google search for Medicare Easy Pay, you can find instructions. But MyMedicare.gov is the safer way to pay for Medicare premiums. I say that because we've had retirees put paper checks in the mail to pay for their Medicare premiums, paper checks that were lost or stolen, never cashed, their Medicare was canceled, and it was a nightmare. So I would always encourage you to pay your Medicare premiums electronically. Now, back to the left side of the screen here, I want to warn people that there are significant shocking premium increases for 2025 for two of our UC medical plans. The core medical plan is no longer going to be free next year. Neither is the UC Medicare Choice Plan. Both of those plans, if you got 100% of the UC contribution, they were free this year. They will not be free next year. There are significant premium increases. For example, if you have core and you are covering just yourself, just as a simple example, let's assume you get 100% of the UC contribution. Your premium is going up from zero to $120.61 a month. That is a shocking premium increase of $120 a month, and I don't want it to surprise you. If you are in the UC Medicare Choice Plan through United Healthcare, that plan also had a shocking premium increase. No longer will it be free. This year, if you were getting 100% of the UC contribution, you might have been getting a credit on your pension check to partially reimburse you for what you pay for Medicare. We call it Medicare Part B reimbursement. You might have been getting a credit of $20.89 a month. You won't get that credit of $20.89 next year. Instead, you'll pay $42.47. That means that to the net cost to you for the UC Medicare Choice Plan, it's going up by $63 a month. I don't want that to shock you. You will no longer get that Medicare Part B reimbursement, that credit on your pension check that is only available to those in the least expensive plans. Well, you see, Medicare Choice used to be one of the least expensive plans, but it's going up in premium by a lot. So you'll no longer get Part B reimbursement. Few plans left result in Medicare Part B reimbursement. That would be Kaiser Senior Advantage and UC Medicare PPO without prescription drugs. That special plan for people who are triple covered. Last thing I want to talk about before we move on is that there's a lot of confusion about what you pay when you look at your retiree direct deposit statements. They are not formatted in a way that makes them easy to read. So here's a clue for you. If you look at your direct deposit statement and you see the codes MED MBR Prem, MED MBR Prem, that means medical member premium. That means that's the amount that is paid to the medical plan by the member, you, prem means premium. So it's the retiree medical plan premium. If you see med ER prem, that means medical employer premium. ER means employer, not emergency room in this context. Well, the employer is UC. So if you see med ER prem, that means that's what UC is paying for your medical plan premium, not you. So don't think that it's being deducted from your pension check. It's not if it says ER. If it says MBR, then it is being deducted from your UC pension check. I hope that helps clear things up. Some general things I want you to know about the plans. First of all, preventive care is generally provided at no cost. I say generally because the preventive care has to be uh, recommended by the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force. It also has to be billed correctly and you have to be getting it at the right times. But if preventive care is billed correctly with preventive diagnosis codes at the right times, then you, you usually don't pay for it unless they find something wrong. If, for example, you get a colonoscopy, a preventive colonoscopy shouldn't cost you anything under our medical plans. But if they find something wrong in there, you may have something to pay. It may not be totally at no cost. So watch out for that. But, you know, if you get your COVID shot, your flu shot, mammogram, whatever, on schedule, you usually don't pay. Something else to understand about UC medical plans, 
Different insurance companies specialize in different things. As a result, your medical plans may have multiple vendors uh, associated with them. Your medical benefits might be paid for by the insurance company, but you might have a separate mental health benefit uh, provider and a separate pharmacy benefit manager to control your pharmacy drug, uh, coverage. Don't let that surprise you. That is normal. I'll point out how that works with the different plans as we get into the plan details. Something else to know, if you enroll a newly eligible family member, then expect mail eventually from a company called Unify HR. Unify HR is a third party that UC uses to verify the eligibility of covered family members. And if you get something from them, it should be co-branded with University of California. But it's important. Um, Unify HR might reach out to you three months after you enroll a new spouse or a grandchild or something like that, or if you adopt a child. Um, anytime you add a newly eligible family member, you might be contacted roughly three months thereafter, and you might be asked for marriage certificates, birth certificates, and the like. It's very important that you respond to those things because if you don't, your family member will be disenrolled. You might also be occasionally asked about this even if you've provided evidence in the past because people don't always remain married. And UC has found that it has spent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars on ex-spouses that UC retirees never disenrolled after they got a divorce or a legal separation. So. Long story short, uh, you might be occasionally asked for family member information by Unify HR, even if you didn't recently enroll a new family member. UC needs to make sure that those people are still legitimate dependents. Now, regardless of what you hear about the medical plans that I'm going to talk about in this presentation, if you want the nitty gritty detail, then you want to review the plan booklet. The plan booklet is also known as the Evidence of Coverage Document, or EOC. The plan booklet tells you all the details, what you pay for different services, what's covered, what's not covered, how to file appeals, uh, etc., etc. So the plan booklets are very important. They aren't always available for the New Year's version during open enrollment. Sometimes the final version comes out after open enrollment. But you will find the 2024 evidence of coverage plan booklets uh, now. Uh, the 2024 version is already available. And I'm going to point out all the differences for next year as we go through the different plans. So if you take that information plus the changes, you should have a good idea of what the plan will be like in 2025. Where to find these booklets? You'll find them on UCNet. And this is the UCNet open enrollment shortcut ucal.us forward slash oe but you'll also find them on our website the healthcare facilitator program website look under the fine print where to find health insurance coverage details under the fine print i not only link you to the plan booklets but i also wherever i can try to link you to the medical necessity guidelines that the different plans might use to justify approval or rejection of prior authorization for different medical procedures. So you can find the details and some of the uh, medical logic uh, by starting on the fine print page of the Healthcare Facilitator Program website. Now let's spend a little time talking about when and how to make changes to your UC medical plans. Of course, you can make changes during every fall open enrollment period. Remember that when you make changes during open enrollment, those changes are always effective the first of the following year. They aren't effective immediately. They're effective January 1st. And you can feel free to change between the different medical plans regardless of any pre-existing conditions. We have no pre-existing conditions exclusions in any of our medical plan contracts, so you don't need to worry about that. We also don't prohibit you from transferring between Medicare Advantage and Medicare Supplement plans. You may have read that uh, people out in the real world who have regular Medicare Supplement and Medicare Advantage plans that aren't through UC, you may have read that they aren't allowed to go from Medicare Advantage. They can't upgrade to 
Medicare supplement plans called Medigap, if they have pre-existing conditions, or if they are allowed to do it, they might have to pay high-risk premiums that make them unaffordable. We don't have to deal with any of that here at UC. If you're covered by UC medical plans, you don't live in the real world. You live in the UC world where insurance is better. I will warn you, though, if you move out of California and you become covered by VIA benefits, then you would have that problem going between Medicare Advantage and Medicare Supplement plans. But we'll talk more about VIA benefits later. But of course, open enrollment isn't the only opportunity to make changes. Technically, you need to make a change to your medical plan if you move outside its plans, your plan service area. If you're going to be gone from the service area of your medical plan for more than two months, you are required to change medical plans. You can switch back to your original plan if you need to, or if you want to, after you return, but you do need to take, you know, take, take action if you're going to be outside the service area. That, of course, usually means HMOs. If you're in an HMO and you move to Chico, you're going to have to change medical plans because Chico is outside the service area of the HMOs, for example. You can't move to Eureka uh, you, and, and have an HMO. So contact me, contact Nick. We help people make these changes mid-year all year long. Retirees don't sit still, let me tell you. Another opportunity to make a change to your medical plan is if you add a newly eligible family member. Now, remember, when you're making these changes, you always have a 31 calendar day window to make a change. 31 calendar days. You have 31 days to enroll your new spouse. You have 31 days to add your new child that you adopted or had or whatever. You always have a 31 day window. When you add a newly eligible family member, you are also allowed to change medical plans the first of the following month if you really want to. So that's another opportunity to change. So if you're really desperate to change medical plans, you might move, adopt, or get married. Another opportunity to make changes would be, let's say you're opted out of our coverage because you have coverage through your spouse. You don't need our coverage. Well, if you lose that coverage because your spouse retires or you get a divorce or something like that, we will, of course, cover you here so that you don't have a break in coverage. But again, you have to take action within 31 calendar days as of the date of the divorce or the date of the loss of coverage. So keep that in mind. Uh, you would also have to provide proof of that loss of coverage in the form of a letter, either from an employer or your medical plan, proving who lost what and when, okay? Nick and I can help you with those things and with the paperwork. Again, you have 31 days to get these things done. Now, technically you have 31 days, but I would encourage you to get in touch with us before 31 days. And that way, it just in, it gives the retirement system more time to process things. It increases the odds that you'll have ID cards for your new medical plan before you, know, before you actually need them. There's also another opportunity to make enrollment changes. Let's say you're not covered by UC and you want to be covered by UC, but you don't want to wait for open enrollment. You're not adding a family member or moving outside a plan service area. You're not losing other coverage per se. If you've missed enrollment opportunities, you can actually sign up for your medical plan at any time with a 90 day delay. So, if you contact us more than 90 days in advance of needing that coverage, you would be able to pick up a medical plan without having to provide any proof of the loss of other coverage. So that might be the easier way to do it. Uh, similarly, let's say you're not covering your spouse right now, but you want to add them to your UC medical plan. Technically, you could do it at any time with a 90 day delayed enrollment. So try to get a hold of us more than 90 days in advance if you need that coverage. Let us know and we'll try to help you with the entire process. So focusing on open enrollment for 2025 for a minute, remember, if you want to make a change, you are generally going to make your open enrollment change on UC RAISE, the University of California Retirement at Your Service Interactive Retiree Portal, where you sign in. That's the same website you'd use to make open enrollment changes tax withholding changes, address changes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
you can get there by going directly or by going to the UCNet Open Enrollment website. The internet shortcut is ucal.us slash OE. Now, when you make a change on UC Rays, you've got to review, confirm, and get a confirmation number. If you didn't get a confirmation number, you didn't make a change. Be sure to review your confirmation statement. It will be in your UC Rays messages. Now, what if you're having trouble accessing UC Rays? If you can't get in because you've locked yourself out, uh, you want to call the Retirement Administration Service Center, the RASC, at 800-888-UCOP. They can help you unlock your record. Um, additional paperwork may also be required if you are Medicare eligible. So let's say you're changing between medical plans and you're eligible for Medicare. You will have to make an open enrollment change, which you can make online using UC Rays. But the actual Medicare assignment to the new plan requires additional actual paperwork. Uh, if you struggle with that, you know, let the RASC know, give us a call, we'll try to help you. But that paperwork should be faxed to the retirement system. Fax is the best way to do it. The fax number is on the respective forms, and that paperwork is due by November 24th, 2024. You'll want to make photocopies of your Medicare cards and attach those copies to the forms rather than filling out your Medicare number. Now, I want to give a uh, make a special note for people who have suspended their UC medical or dental plan. Let's say you are not currently covered by UC for medical or dental, and you want to get it during open enrollment. The UC RAISE system may not allow it. Uh, it may not be programmed to allow it. If you can't do it on UC RAISE, there's a form that you'll need to submit that will substitute for that UC RAISE open enrollment transaction. That form is called Form UBEN 100. That's U as in university, Ben as in benefits, 100. The UBEN 100, it's kind of an ugly form, but you can mark on it, open enrollment, and you can make uh, change requests by faxing that form in, especially if you're someone who has previously suspended your medical or dental plan. You'll need to submit that form. I don't think UC Rays will allow your enrollment. Now, people ask me every year, during open enrollment, do I have to do anything? And the answer is always the same. You don't have to do anything during open enrollment if you're not making a change. But what I really like to tell people is that you, if you like what you have, you don't have to do anything, but read your open enrollment booklet. Because you won't know if you want to make a change unless you know what the changes are and what the rates are. So make sure you've done at least a, some simple research on premiums and scanned that open enrollment booklet for any changes that might be important to you. Because again, you don't have to do anything during open enrollment unless you want to make a change. Your plans will just continue. But especially this year, when we have shocking premium increases to some of our plans, you need to pay attention, read your open enrollment booklet, figure out what your premiums are before you can safely ignore open enrollment.